Welcome back to another episode of The Greenies. I know it's been a long time. Happy New Year to you all. We're a bit late, but uh, it's important to get another course update out. We've got some information that might be useful for you. Uh, it's been wet, very wet. Wet and cold. So if it's not wet, it's cold. Um, we've, we're look, looking at the data figures. We're sitting quite similar to last year, just shy of what we had last year. But wetter winters are becoming the norm. I had someone come up to me the other day and said, it seems to be shut a lot more now you're in charge. The decision-making process is driven by data and also you know, what we think is best for the course and how we see fit to protect it. But the number one priority throughout these winter months is protect the course. I'll pop all the figures up whilst I'm talking so you can see and compare from year to year. But yeah, we've, we've taken the decision to close a few times, but we have had some extreme weather where we've gone into minuses, so rock hard on the ground to eight degrees the next day, which disrupts the soil profile. The water's not passing through the water table and unfortunately it then saturates the ground and makes it unplayable or we have a high risk of causing excessive damage. Uh, whilst we're here, we're on the second green. So the second and 11 have been on frost pins for quite some time. Um, the reason is that they were really struggling during the wet months. We were worried that we potentially could lose grass coverage and that is one thing that you don't want to do because it's an uphill battle from there. So we're now sitting in a very good place. We've put the greens back on, but I wanted to just touch on why they perhaps are struggling. We've had our annual soil analysis carried out recently. Um, the thatch levels haven't increased from last year. They're sitting very close to 5%, which is a very good number for organic matter. Um, and then also around the 2nd and 11th green, you'll notice most people call these trees, we call them sun blockers. Unfortunately, they block out a lot of this green. So it gets very little sunlight, very little wind flow. And it's not just above the ground, it's also underneath the ground. You've got a whole root system of oak trees going underneath the green. Um, in the summertime, they're thirsty, so it dries the green out. And in the wintertime, they're not as thirsty, so it sits wet a lot. And these clay greens, they were built to hold water. So back in the days of no irrigation, old Mick and Steve would have their hand watering hose out. Um, they, were, they were initially designed to retain water so you didn't have to put as much water down. But the number one concern, again, was just protecting the grass, making sure we didn't lose coverage. Didn't make any reactive decisions, so we didn't run any deep verter drains on them. We just let them rest. Um, but something proactive that's in the works is we've quoted up for um, some drainage to be installed, some pipe drainage to be installed to these two greens. So we're in the process of quoting up through various suppliers and be fully transparent with our decision making processes, really investing in what we deem is essential and this to us is essential. But for now, these greens have recovered a lot. They've improved drastically and they're quite firm now. So this wind as well helps. Another note, we've been busy doing some tree work, finishing up clearing the leaves. The storm set us back a bit where, you know, we've got a lot of deadwood here and there. So we're working on clearing that. So done some path work, still more to do when the just before the season starts. So we'll get the paths topped up fully. Taking the yardage posts on the tees in, they're getting refurbed. So we've done one half, next half next week, um, and then they'll be done by the end of next week, hopefully, and then all back out again. We've also been working on our cup, pin, and flag combinations. So the ferrules in the existing flag poles were worn. So you notice in high winds that they just flop out the ground. Got new ferrules on them and then clean the cups out. And we've also got a hole stabilizer in there as well for you. Hi there, Kieran here mechanic at Hartman Common Golf Club. Be pleased to know we have just purchased a second-hand set of grinders. This is a valuable investment to the club because now we can bring all cylinder sharpening in-house. This is an excellent future-proofing investment by the club. If we need to repair any units throughout the season, we can do so and it will greatly reduce downtime, including the annual grinding we do before the season starts. Get our cylinders cutting nice and sleek. At the moment, I'm doing a winter overhaul on all the machinery here making sure that all the machinery is ready to go in the new season. Uh, normally we like to keep these videos positive, you know, we'll focus on the positives, but unfortunately we've just got to discuss something with a little bit of negativity around it. Unfortunately, there's users of our putting green facilities and practice facilities that seem to be lacking the basic golf course etiquette that is required when, uh, when playing our course. Um, as you can see below, I'll pop a video because I've got a close up of it. There are some divots taken. I mean, it's barely, What's that, about 12 inches, Sam? 12 inches off the, the actual green surface. Um, you should not be taking divots around these greens. It's it's mainly a putting green, and we allow some chipping in, uh, in as well. Unfortunately, there's been no real official rulings on this, but luckily the CDG are close to releasing a new set of practice facility rules, which will apply to the short game area, the long game area, which we call the old second. We call this one the old first. 
and it's just basic golf course etiquette and we can't tolerate this anymore. Unfortunately, if we put a little bit of seed and divot mix in there, that's not really going to germinate until sort of March, April, May time. Um, so that's there for, you know, a couple of months now. Um, the same applies in the bunkers. There was divots in the bunkers. Someone had been pitching over the bunker. So there's a ton of divots in there. And then also pitch marks as well. It's unacceptable to be making, you know, 50 pitch marks on the putting green when people want to use it as a practice facility. I know the majority of people have excellent golf course etiquette. It's just the minority really that can ruin it for the majority. I mean, also, no parking on the on the verges. You can see there's some people park. They are not for parking. If you park in the car park and walk down rather than uh, parking on the on the verges on the common. And then the fourth tee, we're just ticking it along. Um, I can't remember where we left off in the last video, but sheets came off and then now it's just a case of regular fertilizing, regular cutting, trying to fill it out. And then when it warms up, we'll be in a really good spot. Um, also got to keep them rabbits off. They keep trying to get in. And we'll be up there this afternoon to turn the fence over so there's no holes at the bottom. Um, and then we'll give it another fertilizer this afternoon. It's a good day for it. And then whilst it's dry, we've been doing some deep aeration to the fairways, you'll notice. We've also done the tees and approaches as well. It's been a fantastic week. We've really been had a productive week. So it's nice, it's a nice change of pace because it's been, been a bit frustrating of lately, but we've had a good week. Aeration's carried out mostly and very happy with how the work went as well. So we kept the verter drains going by getting deliveries of food from the uh, kitchen. So They've got a new strip back menu and uh, we we're just having a little trial of it. Very tasty, kept us going as well. So see a bite to eat, be sure to check it. And then also Sam, the man on the cam, I call him, he's been doing some irrigation upgrades. So we've now finished all the green heads. They are now all upgraded. And then he's, and then he's also carried out some repairs to some tees that we identified in the drain down report at the end of summer. So he's repaired those. And then it's on to head levelling next week where we are lifting the heads up, making sure they're efficient. Um, and then that is pretty much it for irrigation. You then fire up and start auditing, making sure all the heads are right and making sure the database is up to date. Right, so just at the shoe cleaner, you'll notice recently that the shoe cleaner went down. Um, we got to the point where the technician actually had to come out and have a look at it. Whilst he was on site, he recommended that we do the following. But then a continuous amount of pressure leaving the gun He's asked that we pulse the gun instead. This is so that the pressure inside the shoe cleaner can be maintained and the pressure doesn't drop because that is what ultimately led, for it, uh, led to it breaking down in the first place. So this is just for blowing air. It's not to scrape uh, mud out your wheels, mud off your feet. It's just high pressure air. So this week we've got a very dry Monday and Tuesday, but then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we've got potentially heavy rains arriving. So we are just out getting a full rough cut in, semi cut, and then we've done a little spike on the greens with some top dressing as well and that's perfectly timed right before the heavy rain and then just to finish on if you need any painting doing don't forget to see max julia and beth they've just painted their office looks absolutely fantastic so well done guys uh, thank you all for watching we'll see you next time